Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Carol, for uh, bringing that special music to us. And uh, we're going to hear from you again, I think. And then Patricia, so, or Pat, so glad you are with us today to play. Uh, we're just grateful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as we uh, turn to the Word, I'm going to invite you to uh, get your Bible out. I know, what a novel idea, huh? Go find your Bible. And hopefully there's, there's not a on you. Did I say that? I did, didn't I? <laughs> Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I give thanks for this day. We thank you for uh, this gift of worship today. Lord, help us in this unusual circumstance right now to uh, be deeply in prayer and in worship as we uh, celebrate who you are and what you've done for us. Lord, we want to honor you and give thanks to you. Help us now, Lord, as we consider your word that you would uh, reach into us and, and speak into our hearts, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to be working out of uh, Psalm 130 today. It's a short psalm, there's only eight verses, so I invite you to, to open your Bible. I'm going to be reading the psalm a little bit as we go through, uh, through the, uh, the words of the message that God has given to my battery going dead? Oh, okay. We are having a few technical glitches today, you know? Hey, <laughs> it's the way of the world right at the moment. So I'm just grateful for the technology that we can meet face-to-face -face this way and continue to uh, share in worship together. Uh, remember, as I shared on Friday, uh, morning uh, in, a, in a Facebook post that worship is our opportunity to engage with God, and it's up to us to do that. Worship is a verb, so I encourage you, no matter what's happened technically, don't let that keep you from worshiping. Well, when I was a boy, Flagstaff was such a small town, you might hear someone say, everyone lives within earshot, or they might say that within shouting distance. Certainly my Aunt Jewel and my Uncle Charlie did. They lived just down the end of the street from, or the end of the block from where we lived. But how far really is earshot? How far can you really hear? Well, according to Guinness World Book of Records, the normal intelligible outdoor range of the human voice, male human voice, in still air is, believe it or not, 590 feet, 6.6 .6 inches. How's that for being precise? I think my normal outdoor hearing range is about six feet. Guinness goes on to talk about the uh, Silbo Gumera, which is a whistling language of the Spanish-speaking inhabitants of the, of the uh, Canary Island of, of La Gomera. And under ideal conditions, uh, you can understand and communicate over a distance of five miles. Can you believe that? And there's a recorded case of uh, acoustic conditions that were just perfect of the human voice being detected over ten and a half miles across still water at night. So the human voice can carry quite a long ways. Now sometimes Valerie has to shout at me across the room just for me to hear her. And oh yeah, I'll put my hearing aids back on. We generally shout when we're frustrated and angry or to threaten and intimidate someone. <sighs> and have you ever noticed how your face contorts into this angry appearance and continence when you're screaming, not to mention the veins in your neck start popping out as your body gets ready to race toward a stroke. So don't do it. Have you ever shouted at God trying to get his attention? Well, after losing his job, Jim Carrey as Bruce and Bruce Almighty did just that. Watch this clip called, uh, Give Me a Sign. Okay, God, you 
You want me to talk to you? Then talk back. Tell me what's going on. What should I do? Give me a signal. I need your guidance, Lord. Please send me a sign. Oh, what's this Joker doing now? Okay. All right. I'll try it your way. All right? Lord, I need a miracle. I'm desperate. I need your help, Lord. Please, reach into my life. Ah, uh, what the heck are ya? I got ya! <laughs> Well, I think uh, Bruce got a little upset there at God. Is it okay to do that, to get angry at God? Do you feel like you're in the pits right now, like he was, out of work? Stock market is rolling on a biggest roller coaster we've ever seen. Are you down to your last three turns on the toilet paper roll? Can't see your grandkids? Important doctor's appointments getting missed? Maybe feeling lonely and isolated. This is a tough time, isn't it? It's an unusual time for us. Maybe you feel a little bit like the psalm writer did here in Psalm 130. Let's pick up the first couple of verses. Out of the depths I cry out to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Well, that's pretty darn demanding, don't you think? Hear me. Pay attention to me. Like Bruce, we often feel that God doesn't hear us, and so maybe he hasn't answered. Maybe our prayers are ineffective. Maybe God is just too busy doing something else to pay attention to us. I was a very young and naive police officer one day when uh, I was trying to get the attention of this very intoxicated man. And as I called to him, my voice kept getting louder and louder and louder until I was shouting at him. And then a very much more experienced officer walked by me and walked right up to him and whispered in his ear. And immediately the man calmed down and complied. It was a valuable lesson. One that I was able to carry over into my parenting with teenagers Ah, the quiet whisper often garners much more attention than shouting does. You see, God is not hard of hearing at all. But that seems to be exactly what occurred with the psalm writer. He's burned off a bit of steam and shouting in his anger, but suddenly he shifts gears now, maybe realizing just who it is he's talking to. He says in verse 3, if you, O oh Lord, kept a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared or revered. This is a shift to a, a sense of humility, realizing that, wait a minute, I'm yelling at God. What was I thinking? He says, O oh Lord, if you were to track and count all in my life and mistakes 
no one would be worthy to be with you. And yet you forgive and you deserve to be honored for that. You see, God wants our obedience. But let's admit it, we're not very obedient people, are we? Most often we're petulant and demanding and not aware of really who we're dealing with in the world. But you see, that's what I love about the Bible. This authenticity as we, as we reach into God's word and, and, and see real life recorded and, and God's character revealed. Our scriptures tell the truth about God and life. We learn from texts like this that it's okay for us to get angry with God because, well, God can handle it. He knows us and he's quick to forgive. When was the last time, or well, let me ask you this, how long did it take for you to forgive the last time someone yelled at you? Humility enables us to be ready to hear God. I don't know about you, but when I talk to God, I expect an answer. Right now, immediately. But let's go on to verse 5. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. Well, now, this is surprising. How can the writer go from yelling at God to humility and now patiently waiting? I, right now, the Reese family, some friends of our daughter up in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska, they had wanted a child for years. They wanted a family, and they tried and tried, and it just wasn't happening. But they wanted this family so desperately that they finally decided uh, to commit to adoption. And so they first tried uh, Ethiopia. Uh, knew that Ethiopia had this large population of, of uh, orphan children. And then uh, Ethiopia closed... Uh, adoption, so they shifted to uh, looking in China. And after about a year, they were blessed to be able to adopt this a, a little beautiful little boy. Well, over the next 18 months or so, prepared to adopt yet another child. And during this time, when they received word that they had been approved for the adoption, they also found out that they were pregnant. And so now this family of five, what a beautiful family, wonderful children, uh, and they're just beautiful parents. Give thanks to God for that. They're overjoyed. Sometimes God works that way. Sometimes when we wait, it's because God has something planned or we need the time to heal and to be ready for what God has in store. The writer says he waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Have you ever worked nights? Some of you have, I know. And, and I tell you, when I used to work nights years ago, it seemed like sunrise was never going to come. We just waited for that, that dawn in the Far East to, to start getting lighter. To have patience and to wait is a virtue. It's a virtue of insight and maturity to look out from your own sin, your own selfish desires, and it is a mark of self-control, that fruit of the Holy Spirit, self-control. Humility, then waiting. We're setting the stage for something. We're setting the stage for God's presence in our lives. The psalm writer begins, out of the depths. He's crying out to God from the depths, but even that phrase itself declares the declaration of hope. Uh, there's, he's in the middle of calamity, chaos, and yet this spoken hope coming out of, I know where I'm at right now, I'm in the pits, but I'm not going to stay here. I'm coming out of the pits. I'm not going to stay where I am right now. From out of these depths, God is still within reach, still within earshot. 
of your voice. Verse 7, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him there is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all these. You see, we're in a quandary. On one hand, we are in deep trouble. We're, we're stuck in, in the mire and the pit of this world, and at the same time, we've turned away from God. Our free choice to do that. We've realized the mistake we made now that we're in the pit, and we've cried out. Here's the good news. God will not be so easily rejected. God's presence and power must be reckoned with in every encounter in our human existence, even in the depths when we're really struggling. In an echo of the Shema, that prayer of the early Jews, hear, O Lord. The psalm begins with a demand for God to hear. But now in verse 7, O Israel, hope in It is still up to Israel to hear God, and it is up to you and I to listen for his voice, for we live under a new covenant, a new covenant of, under Jesus Christ. You see, God has no problem with you coming and complaining and approaching with all your demands. Consider a few from uh, our scripture. From 1 Samuel 7, 9, Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. From Psalm 3, verse 4, I cry aloud to the Lord and he answers me from his holy hill. And from Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. And then from the New Testament, but the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will name him John. From Luke chapter 1, verse 13. You see, this is the character of our God who invites us to speak to him, to yell at him, who doesn't count your sins against you when you come to him. You can take your fears and your challenges to him. You see, God is big enough for anything you've got, but we have a part in this love. We must remember who we are and be humble before him, setting the stage to hear him, and then we wait for God's timing to speak. We're aware, awake, and watching. Our hope is in the Lord. We need not fear. We're in troubled times. But God is saying to you, you don't need to fear. I'm with you. Call out to me. Whatever your fears today or tomorrow... You don't have to face them alone. God wants your honesty and genuine full attention. This is the witness of the Bible that God is never far from you. Are you feeling far from God today? Have you drifted away? But the fears around us in the world are making you question and wonder, can I truly find hope? Don't wait. Come home to where you are. Come to him and rest. In humility, offer yourself up to Jesus. He is faithful and he will welcome you. That's a promise that I can guarantee to you. Be prepared when you speak to God, though. He will answer. Be prepared to obey. I want to invite us to take just a few moments to Consider, what is God saying to you today? Are you taking time to listen for him? Let's be in silent meditation for a few moments and let God speak to your heart.
Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you invite us with all of our emotion to approach you. Even if we're angry or feeling lost or lonely, hurting, just confused, you welcome us. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us that much. Help us to approach you humbly, to set aside our selfish desires. Or give us hearts willing to learn from you and to grow from you. Lord, help us to wait on you. Your timing is perfect. Ours is imperfect. Most of all, Lord, thank you that with you there is hope. And so thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for those who might be watching today who are just now saying yes to you, that I need you in my life and uh, I've made a mess and I can't do this anymore and please forgive me. Lord, thank you that right now you're embracing them and pouring your love down upon them. Thank you, Jesus, for your great love. Amen.